Ever wondered how to handle unsolicited advice from the back of a donkey? Hang on to your reins because in today's funny story joke, Orville Ornery O'Sullivan and his witty sidekick, Beatrice, take you on a journey where critics meet comedy in the most unexpected ways. Orville Ornery O'Sullivan shuffled down the dusty road, his weathered face creased with a scowl that could curdle milk. Beside him clopped a scrawny donkey named Beatrice, her ears permanently pricked in a state of perpetual suspicion. Perched precariously on Beatrice's bony back was Orville's eight-year-old grandson, Timmy, bouncing like a particularly enthusiastic beanbag chair. Grandpa. Timmy piped up, his voice high-pitched and cheerful. Don't you think it's kind of weird for me to be riding and you to be walking? You look like a grasshopper with a sprained ankle. Orville grunted. It's the only way your scrawny shins won't rub blisters the size of dinner plates on Beatrice's bony hide, you little rapscallion. Just then, a shiny carriage pulled by two well-fed horses approached, kicking up a dust cloud that momentarily obscured the road. Inside, a portly woman with a feather boa the size of a boa constrictor squinted at them. For shame. She huffed, her voice dripping with faux concern. The poor old man trudging along while the child sits pretty. What a disgrace. Orville choked back a retort about her carriage's resemblance to a gilded outhouse and mumbled something about fresh air being good for the soul. Timmy, however, wasn't one for subtlety. Hey, lady. He yelled, waving a fist. It's my grandpa and my donkey, and we can ride or walk however we darn well please. The carriage sped on leaving behind a cloud of dust and Orville with a throbbing vein in his forehead. Grumbling under his breath about uppity city folk, he helped Timmy swap places. They continued, Timmy waddling uncomfortably beside Beatrice while Orville enjoyed the surprisingly comfortable donkey ride. He hadn't realized how much his knees ached until that moment, but their newfound peace was shattered by a group of rowdy cowboys approaching. The leader, a man with a handlebar mustache that would make a walrus jealous eyed them with amusement. Well, howdy there, partner. You sure got a mighty fine-looking donkey there. You wouldn't happen to be mistreating that poor little fella, would you? He gestured to Timmy, who scowled back with all the fierceness an eight-year-old could muster. He ain't mistreating nobody. Timmy protested. I just gotta walk because he gets back pains if we both ride. The cowboys burst into laughter, hoots echoing across the prairie. Orville, feeling his cheeks burn with embarrassment, decided to take action. All right, all right, that's enough. He barked, dismounting Beatrice. Timmy, hop on. They continued, both perched atop the now slightly disgruntled donkey. It wasn't the most comfortable ride, Beatrice's bony spine digging into their nether regions with alarming regularity. But at least they weren't being judged, right? Wrong. As they traversed a bustling market town, a group of elderly women gathered outside a bakery, their eyes sharp as tacks under their frilly hats. Oh, the cruelty. Gasped one, her voice tight with manufactured outrage. Two grown men piling on top of that poor creature. It's a disgrace. Chimed in another, clutching a loaf of bread like a weapon. Don't they have any shame? Orville, at his wit's end, threw his hands up in the air. Look, ladies. He bellowed. We tried walking, we tried one at a time, but nothing seems to please you. What do you want us to do? A thoughtful silence descended upon the group. Finally, the first woman spoke. Well, you could always just carry the donkey. She said with a sly smile. Before Orville could respond with a string of expletives that would make a sailor blush, Timmy piped up, a mischievous glint in his eye. That's a great idea. Come on, Grandpa, let's give it a shot. And so, Orville found himself with Beatrice draped limply over his shoulder, her hooves dangling precariously close to his head. Timmy, perched precariously on Beatrice's belly, giggled with glee. The townsfolk stared, then burst into laughter. Just as Orville was about to unleash the full fury of his vocabulary, they reached the bridge. The rickety wooden structure groaned under their combined weight and with a yelp that would make a coyote proud, Orville stumbled. Beatrice, sensing freedom, bolted, dragging Orville with her. They crashed into the railing, sending Beatrice tumbling over the edge and into the murky water below and drowned. 
a splash. Silence. The moral of the story? If you try to please everyone, you might as well kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.